Okay, this is just a quick video walkthrough on a comparison between the gray tube and the plasma ignition, uh, my particular method at least. Okay, so with the gray tube, whether it's a red herring or not um, is irrelevant because the concept in it gives a, uh, an effect that accelerates the capacitor discharge beyond uh, the normal discharge rate uh, because of the negative resistance effect created and um, you know another part of the gray tube system is or the, the Ed Gray motor or the Marvin Cole motor more accurately is that it um, the power supply has some en uh, energy gain supposedly but whether that's true or not doesn't take away from the fact that there is something unique and novel about the switching method in, in the gray tube patent. And it's basically identical to the plasma ignition. So <clears throat> let's say we have the, the gray tube here. And let's say you have the low voltage rod here and you have the high voltage rod here. You got the grid and that goes out to an inductor. And this is the motor coil. Okay, so on this end, we have a high voltage capacitor, which is like maybe 4 kV, 2 UF, 2 microfarads or larger. And the values are not important right now. Let's just look at the principle. Okay, and obviously that's getting charged up by the power supply. But on this end, we have a diode in reverse like this. Okay, and so in the gray tube, what we have is a high voltage cap right here, and then we have a low voltage uh, supply here, which is basically a battery or a battery bank, like two 12 volt car batteries or something, or deep cycles or whatever, but 12, 24 volts with pretty big uh, capacity, and you have a high voltage um, source here with low volt, low uh, capacity, and so this is the uh, the uh, spark gap. Now with the supposed diode, what we have is, um, basically I'm just going to draw this right here. Okay, so this low voltage source has a common ground with the high voltage source, and the inductor goes back to the same common ground. Okay, so what we have is, this diode is switched in and out, it, you know, maybe the switch is on the other side, but the point is, is when the diode is switched in, Okay, this gap right here is smaller than this gap, which means um, with this capacitor charged up to be able to ju jump the gap, you want this gap smaller than this gap because you want it preferentially jumping to the other rod instead of directly over to the grids. You know, this could be multiple grids if, if that's how you want to make it. Part of that, I think, is maybe kind of a red herring because in my experiments, I haven't found that containing this inside of a sealed tube makes any difference. Having a grids or a regular point doesn't make any difference. But it's almost kind of like a spark gap, like a transistor type concept. Or a, uh... okay, so anyway, what happens is, let's say the voltage of this cap is high enough to jump this gap, but it can't unless this diode is switched in. And you can see that the blocking diode is not a blocking diode until it is. And what I mean is, until the voltage on the cathode is higher than the anode, it's complete wide, uh, wide open path back to ground. So when this is switched on, this high voltage capacitor will discharge across the gap. It will slam into here, giving a recharging pulse to this battery, and it's finding ground back to itself, right? Okay, but what happens is this, this diode is open, and it does let the capacitor jump across and slam into this positive here. This is positive, that's negative. This is positive, that's negative. Okay, and so as soon as it does, then the blocking diode, thyristor or, or whatever you, component you're using there, which is basically acting like a diode or a switched diode, is going to shut off and it doesn't have anywhere else to go. So only a small bit of this discharge is going to be intercepted by the battery. That battery voltage will increase just for a little moment because it just got a huge uh, bang to it. When this diode shuts off, where is that discharge going to go? The only other path to ground is over to the grids, okay? Through the inductor, 
and then back to ground. So what happens is the high voltage jumps, the high voltage uh, source jumps the gap into a low voltage source, the diode shuts off, and then it goes over to the grid through the inductor and back to ground. Now, if you're just discharging basically, you know, this high voltage cap and very low capacitance into this coil, you know, you'll get it to pulse, but it's not going to be that impressive. But what happens is as soon as that high voltage um, is turned away from here because this diode is in blocking mode now since this voltage is higher on the cathode than it is on the anode this whole space between the the rods and the grids is ionized right it's very very ionized very positively charged which means it's highly conductive pathway which is seeking a balance which means it's going to pull current electrons from somewhere to balance itself right so what happens is this area becomes so ionized that it's conductive enough for this battery to discharge across the gap, acting as a low voltage uh, source, which is discharging across a gap that it normally couldn't. Why is it able to do so now? Because the gap is ionized previously by this high voltage cap discharge. So it's ionized. This battery goes through this diode this way through the inductor right after the high voltage goes here and then the battery current is going backwards through here giving this enormous really really quick uh, discharge um, uh, through this inductor to charge it really really fast and it will give a real strong pop okay so what we're going to look at now is the analogy to my method of the plasma ignition which is basically Let's say this is the uh, ignition coil. Let's say it's like an auto transformer type. You got the positive here and, and you got the negative here. And let's say you have a, a CDI discharge right here. Let's make this a little switch. That's a switch. We're going to put the diode right here. Okay. There's a spark gap, which is a spark plug. But instead of using it as an ignition source, we're going to use it to charge a coil to run a motor. Okay. And that's the motor coil. Okay, so what the sequence of events are is as soon as this is switched in, that cap drops across the primary of the ignition coil. The ignition coil high voltage, it doesn't go to the gap first. Remember, this diode is wide open until this voltage is higher than the uh, anode. So what happens is the high voltage discharge goes this way, this way, and goes to the, through the capacitor back to ground but just a small percentage will go this way. Then the diode blocks it, and where does that high voltage go? Well, it's going to seek a path to ground, and the, and the next lowest resistance path to ground is this way, which is going to be over the gap, right? So in here, we have the high voltage uh, cap discharging across the gap, slamming into this low voltage source. We have this high voltage right here, jumping across, jumping this way, going backwards through a diode to a low voltage source. The diode shuts off, right? And in the, in the plasma ignition, my plasma ignition method, this diode shuts off. That high voltage has nowhere else to go, but he, this way, ionizing this gap, since this diode shuts off, the high voltage has nowhere to go, but this way, which is going to ionize this gap here, making it very conductive. As soon as that's ionized, as soon as this is ionized, the battery can discharge through the coil like this, where the current's coming in the opposite direction. And then what you have right here is when this is ionized, this low voltage source, which is this capacitor of a couple hundred volts and however many microfarads, is going to move through the diode over the gap through this inductor right here, which is the motor coil, and you get the high current punch going this way. So it is a 100% mirror image analogy of the gray tube. And if you have a cap, and you discharge it normally, it's going to kind of go down like this. But when you use this particular method, this capacitor right here, the discharge is almost instantaneously in a straight line because all the resistance is removed and it accelerates and actually pulls the discharge from the cap. Um, so instead of the cap discharging into a positive resistance, slowing down its discharge, it's being sucked out at a negative resistance, accelerating its discharge. So you get a power increase that's absolutely crazy. And even though it's the same energy discharge,
a particular amount of energy discharge at low power versus energy discharged at a high power, the high power discharge can always accomplish more. And this is the basis of a lot of the Tesla impulse uh, technology. Okay, so right here, this is the motor coil right here. And then it turns the plasma green and uh, more quiet. But this is the mirror image analogy. Okay, and so um, I have not replicated this at this scale with a large capacitor discharging as the high voltage source and having a battery jump the gap. But what would happen is if you can ionize this gap enough, you reduce all the resistance that this battery discharge will see as it's discharging through this coil. Which means you're getting a very uh, a low voltage but super high, insanely crazy um, power increase uh, discharge from the battery um, over the gap. And so that's the comparison between the gray tube and my particular method of the plasma ignition. Now, if you just did this with a little, you know, small capacitor for capacitive discharge ignition purposes and put a little motor coil here, you can run a teeny tiny little motor. That's not a problem. But uh, what I did with uh, my so-called booster caps and everything was basically I just had another um, cap right here charged by a, another power source. Uh, controlled by a variac and when this plasma event happened this cap would also discharge and I could just crank the variac up and this cap would discharge you know bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and that's what was running my motor if you saw my little motor experiment this was basically the setup that I was using well this is the exact setup I was using so you can see gray tube high voltage jumps across the gap slams into a low voltage the diode shuts off it goes over to the only other path to ground through the inductor and then it ionizes the gap for the low voltage DC because Hackenberger talked about mixing high voltage static electricity which I'm talk which I believe he's talking basically uh, uh, high voltage or the high voltage um, spikes coming from the power supply in conjunction with this ionizing the gap and then he's talking about mixing DC which is the direct current from this battery is discharging directly over a gap a spark gap and that's what's pulsing this inductor um, so same thing here, cap discharges to primary, you get a high voltage discharge going backwards through here, diode shuts off, then it goes here over the gap, ionizes it, and then this cap can then follow over it, and you get a high speed accelerated discharge of this capacitor to pulse this coil. And you can augment this by adding in uh, another cap in parallel. And uh, so anyway, hope hope that uh, kind of clarifies a little bit about what I have been mentioning about the mirror image analogy between um, the gray tube and my particular method of the, the plasma ignition. It, it's 100% it's identical in principle.